would like to welcome David Brandenburger uh, to chat about tourism. Um, for those of you that um, study my tourism courses, you will know that um, there are a whole, there's a whole variety of tourism. Um, and what we will be talking to today is about uh, David's experiences and um, some of the things that he's seen on his travels. So, welcome David. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, a very, very brief introduction. You've been um, cycling around the world for five years. Yes, yeah, correct. What was the motive for that? Uh, <laughs> the motive was uh, traveling. <laughs> I want to see the world. I'm curious about what's next on this other side of the next corner. And um, yeah, uh, that was basically the, the main interest. To but lots of people want to travel, but uh, not many think, oh, I'll, I'll bike it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the bike is uh, just um, a better instrument to travel for, uh, to get more into the deep of um, of the country, of the people and, and everything. Um, I was traveling a lot uh, as a backpacker with buses and public transport. But yeah, then uh, you cross all over these places. I mean, you can do a lot of distance and then you see a lot of beautiful places where you just can't get out or it's too complicated to get back or so. And then I decided uh, the next time I will go with a bike uh, because you can stop everywhere and you're slower so you can't cover that much distance anyway you have to lower your expectations uh, that you can't do three four hundred k's a day or so uh, but you get more details you see a lot more details or so and you can stop on every shop or so and get in contact with a lot more people and uh, that's gets you a little bit more insight of uh, the culture and um, how the people live and so so yeah that's that's what I, I wanted to explore more and that is that is really the a big difference between traveling uh, in a car in a boat or in a um, public transport or so or by bike or even by foot so uh, just to just to confirm you've done Traveling by public transport before this trip started. Yeah. But when you started, you left. You're from Switzerland. You left Switzerland on your bike. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the bike was built in Czech Republic, but oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I left there by uh, by bike. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fine. So this particular trip, and I think I can't remember whether I said it. You've been going five years. Yeah. Yeah. That. Uh, that trip is going on for five years. I started six years ago, but the first project didn't work out that good, <laughs> so I had to find a new one, and, and that, that is uh, better. So I, I was sticking on that since five years. Yeah. And um, it's been brought to a somewhat abrupt halt <laughs> by the current pandemic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what were your initial plans to, to go on indefinitely? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the f initial plans was um, uh, was to go open end. Um, yeah, that, that that was uh, was I uh, figuring out the last time as I was uh, traveling with public transport for one year in South America. I uh, organized everything that I could go back to my working place uh, as well or so. So I was really everything was secure and I can just go and come back and can work again. Uh, but that didn't work out like that. So my boss called me uh, during my trip and said he cannot afford me so I have to search another job. Uh, so I was kind of nowhere. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was a big lesson that I had to learn, uh, especially for Swiss people. We have everything secured with a lot of insurance and whatever. Yeah, that that you can't be sure for everything in your future life. You can't plan your life uh, like a list that, 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 and tick the, all the boxes off. It's just, it doesn't, it, life doesn't work that way. 
so I went home. Uh, first, I wanted to go go home immediately, but then I say, okay, I'm, I will be in the same situation if I go uh, immediately or just continuing on my planet tour. And yeah, and then I, as I came back home, I saw, okay, now I learned that lesson. The next time I can just go open end, just uh, see how long and how far you come and and then come home whenever it's it's ready and yeah the thing is if you start to go out of your door and do the first step that's the win yeah if you if you just yeah you can stay at home forever but even the first step even if it doesn't succeed i mean yeah i i i went further on with, with my first project after 300 Ks, my first axle broke. After 500 Ks, the second axle broke. And I said, oh, no, that's not. And it's, it was horrible to, to get that out and in and re the repairs. And I said, like, I can't do that somewhere where I cannot have a, a shop where I can rent out a, a, a sewing machine or something to cut that. And so I, yeah, I, uh, even though it was only 500 Ks or so, I just took that that step to go to, uh, go out and and get it done. I mean, I could have quit at that time and I didn't lose anything because I I have done that step. Yeah. Same as, uh, as I was uh, doing dog sledding uh, in uh, Kirana. Uh, that was in between as I quit the first project and the uh, building of the second project I, I went up to Sweden uh, to to do a dog sledding training because I just f wanted to know if I can do that or not and uh, after two months uh, as I basically finished the training uh, and was kind of a, a dog sledding guide uh, then I got some trouble with my hands and uh, that didn't work out well. So I had to go back home to get the operations done and so, but I still did it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's that's a big win because uh, otherwise I was still wondering, can I do it or not? Even if it doesn't work, there is nothing to lose. At least I tried it. And with this project, I tried since five years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, it seems to work. But now I have uh, to have a big break, and uh, yeah, no one knows how how it will, when it will for, uh, go further on. I'd like to step back. We're going to be jumping all over the place. Um, yep. Sorry. The, no, no, that's <laughs> fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, you uh, your comments made me think about uh, the cultural difference at people's homes. For example, in New Zealand, it is very common for people, once they've graduated, to go away for three years. It's called the OE, the Overseas oh. Experience. Yeah. They primarily go to London, but <laughs> um, people are going to more and more different places. Yeah. Um, an employer in New Zealand, for example, will be unsure about employing a recent graduate if they haven't done their OE oh. because they think they'll be going away. <laughs> now what's the situation in, in uh, Switzerland? Is the expectation that as soon as you've finished your education you're going to go into a job and stay in that job for some time? Yeah, I mean that, that changed in the last years as well, uh, but it's really like that, that uh, yeah you have school, education, work, get your family and um, have have some money, then you can buy a, a house, a car and, and uh, yeah, have families and grow old and uh, then kids taking over and whatever. And that is kind of the thing that uh, yes. we're used to, to grow up like that. But yeah, it, it's... People have been working in the same place for 15 years or 50 years or whatever, and so and it's it's not anymore like that. It's everything changes. Yeah, yeah, the world is changing. But I mean, one of the things that we notice in New Zealand, for example, the average age of Germans who visit New Zealand 
is the 25 to 35 age group. Yeah. The average age for Americans is the 55 to 65 <laughs> age group. Um, because yeah. of the cultural differences at yeah. home and the amount of holiday people mm, can have. Yeah. Um, so, you set off, you um, had a false start with broken, broken axles. Um, mm. What route did you take once you really got going? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the set uh, with the uh, broken axle was uh, with the first strike uh, that I had. And that was, I basically wanted to go up to, to Sweden with that. But I was stuck somewhere in the southern part of Germany, <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't get very far. Um, yeah, and with the with the second one, I was always uh, already been in Sweden, so I had no point to go up there again. Uh, I picked it up in Czech Republic, so I went first on a trial round. Yeah, that's why I learned as well. Uh, not to do too much first, go on a trial round and see if it works or not. So I went to Poland and Eastern Germany and uh, back to Czech Republic and then we could figure out what was uh, has to be done and uh, what is uh, to be repaired or what could we um, do a little bit better or so. And then I went on to Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, Greece, Turkey, Georgia, Azerbaijan, Iran, and then to uh, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan. There I made a, a winter break and got a second operation in my hand and get the Chinese visa because you can't get it somewhere in there near. Go back to Kazakhstan, China, South Korea, uh, then to a little bit Hong Kong and then Australia around and New Zealand from top to bottom. How did you transport the bike from um, when you were crossing water? By ship. <laughs> did you go by ship or did you fly? Uh, no, I, I, uh, I can't go with the same vessel so mm -hmm. it's, it's much too complicated and you have to book that ship six months ahead and you don't know when the, sh the shipping from the trike is can be really happen or so it's it's difficult to to manage that now i have to rent a 20 feet container that i have to put it in and it's very expensive that's uh, yeah i i save a lot of money having my own transport and, and my tent and so but since Europe to China or so there wasn't any any problems or so and I could get into the ferries without any problems I mean I went from Greece to to some islands and, and then to Turkey or even go from Turkey to northern Cyprus and back with a ferry was just getting a ticket and drive in and drive out and that's it but after I was in, in China it didn't work out like that the, even they had a ferry from China to South Korea and I technically I could ride in and ride out but China is different Asia is different so I had to load it in into a container and and been transported and so on and that was all, all the way from China to South Korea from South Korea to Hong Kong from Hong Kong to Australia and from Australia to here and when I will go from here my plan was from here to go to Canada and go on further there. But the same week as I was to intend to load that trike into the container, the lockdown happened. Um, so I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you been here? Um, in Christchurch. Well, we know in New uh, Zealand. In New Zealand, uh, over a year now. Oh. <laughs> I plan to be here about eight months, but yeah, I have to extend to... September. <laughs> yes, everyone's, <laughs> it's changed everyone's plans. Everyone's, yeah. <laughs> What's the situation like in, in Switzerland at the moment in terms of COVID? Oh, uh, yeah, not, not as good as here, for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they 
they have kind of a second wave and uh, the cases rise. I, I'm not sure at the numbers at the moment. I haven't looked at it uh, because, yeah, but yeah, it's rising again and uh, they have to wear masks everywhere, in the, not, not in the transport, uh, not only in the transport, they, uh, in the public transport, they have, you know, when you go shopping and, and everywhere and so, so it's, yeah, it's not funny. No. No, no, we just don't hear much about Switzerland compared to um, some of the other countries. In the oh, yeah. <laughs> there, and no one in Switzerland has said that New Zealand is being thumped by a second wave yet. <laughs> we hear about it. <laughs> right, so you, you've, you said earlier that um, one of the advantages of cycling is that you can't go more um, great distances and so that it forces you to meet local people um, how do local people how have local people responded to you now that's given how far you've come <laughs> so, <laughs> a very difficult question to answer yeah, yeah. so um, what are some really good responses what are some funny responses what are some bad responses <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. yeah I, I think I have to make clear that I'm not a very long distance cyclist. I mean, there are some long distance cyclists on, on the world. They do two, three, five hundred Ks a day. Uh, it's just not my style. It's not my my uh, thing because I want to enjoy the scenery and, uh, and so on. I mean, yeah, you can do it, but I don't have to. Um, and it's everybody's own choice. <laughs> and uh, it depends where you are people reactions is, is different for sure here in New Zealand in Australia or in Asia or in Europe uh, there are some some nasty things in Germany I heard someone who who was swearing about me while I'm, uh, while he had to wait for 20 seconds or so until he could overtake me or so but on the other hand, I could say, okay, I could understand what he was saying to me. I could, yeah, because it's my language. I don't know what people have talking to me in Poland or, or other countries. Maybe they have been swearing at me as well. And I, I just didn't know what, what the heck was, what were they talking about. I just wave and hi. <laughs> so, yeah. But on the other hand, it's, it's really, it, it is a difficult, a difference between Germany, Switzerland, and uh, uh, other places or so. Um, what I heard from other travelers as well, or other cyclists as well, that uh, uh, in yeah, kind of our society, uh, people t think about a little bit too much of, from themselves and think, oh, I'm a cyclist, and, and they they stopping me, and, and whatever. It's just me, 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 and I want to go there, and his cyclists just keep me on going. Huh. Yeah, but it's just some seconds that you will lose, but yeah, you can enjoy the scenery or whatever. So that's, yeah, it changed change your perspective um, funny things are on the way everywhere I mean in, in Kazakhstan or so they try to sit on my trailer <laughs> it's, it's not a bench and so but it, it's really yeah funny when uh, it, even though you, you you can't talk the language or so I mean you have kind of a picture book you can show or so or, or you can have a map uh, that's why I like to travel with a with a printed map because you can show people where you want to go or where you, where you come from or so and, and uh, even though you can't talk the language it's still got you have kind of thing how to communicate and uh, and it's uh, with a with a bike uh, and it doesn't especially have to be a solo powered bike or so I mean for sure my bike gets a little bit more attention than, than another one but uh, especially on the silk route or one of these the hundreds of silk routes uh, so you're always uh, being a kind of a thing of interest 
uh, even though there are hundreds of people to uh, do the kind of Silk Road route, but still the people they are excited to to see travelers on the bike and so and um, and they're interested what you where you come from, where you're going to, what you're doing, and so on. Uh, the funny thing was in, in Kazakhstan, as I entered Kazakhstan the first day or so, they, they came with, with money to me. And I, I th first I thought they wanted to change money. I was, I was, no, I already changed it. But they, they wanted to give me money for uh, having food or something like that. I, I met a bunch of people. They first wanted to invite me for 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 lunch, as I already ate my lunch, so I'm not hungry anymore. I said, yeah, but uh, what do we? Uh, they just wanted to give me something, and they finally they, they want to give me money. I said, no, it's okay, I got enough. And they they opened a the zipper of my jacket, put, shoved it in, and closed it. And I said, just for a coffee, <coughs> and with that money I could buy a whole meal and still got money left. Okay. So it wasn't just a coffee, or so it was really a lot of money. And, I don't know why, but I th I think I don't know if if that is uh, they think uh, when you're on the road on a bike you're so poor you can't afford a car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why they give you money or something. No, but it's really it's, it's funny. I mean, y you get uh, bread, water, and everything. In, yeah, it's, in Iran, if you if you have a kind of a a breakdown, or have a flat tire or whatever you stand next to the street try to repair it after five minutes there are a bunch of people around and they take away your tools and, and try to fix it by your by themselves and sometimes it's, it's horrible so, no, don't do it like that so, but yeah it's it's just the yeah the kind of people they, they just w want to help you as 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 they can and and uh yeah that's that's the cultural difference that you never get to know that when you're driving on a car or by bus or so that is really you get more into the deepness of of the culture uh and yeah when you stay overnight in, in local people as well for sure so how was the i mean you, you mentioned language um and i would assume that in many places you had no common language with the local people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially in China when you cannot read the signs anyway. Because yeah. <laughs> um, well, I was thinking of you know, some of the stands, um, they're probably not used to um, European language apart from Russian. Yeah, yeah. You have to talk Russia. Um, I can't talk Russian. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, kind of a, a challenge. This is a slight aside, but um, did you get a sense of what people in those in the ex-Soviet states um, how they felt about the Russians? Because they are ex-Soviet, they have kind of a distance. Uh, so they, they, yeah, they still, yeah. That's why they want to separate <laughs> themselves from. Yeah from the other country and so I mean that is that is uh, naturally given because I mean the reason I ask <laughs> is um, I went to Czechoslovakia in its last year of existence mm. just mm. after the fall of the communist regime oh, yeah. and I went um, I spent most of my time in Slovakia and first of all people would speak to me in German and not, not look very happy um, and then they'd look even more unhappy speaking to me in Russian. <laughs> and as soon as they realized that I could speak neither German nor Russian, I was suddenly very welcome and all the smiles <laughs> came. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that is, that is always history-based. Yeah. Um, yeah, wherever you, you go. I mean, yeah, you can do a lot of of the past, of the history or so. I mean, uh, there's, there's a lot of... I feel very sorry about a lot of young German travelers. Mm. Uh, I I had made that experience so uh, back in twenty years ago or so as I was traveling in South America. People said, "Ah, oh, you're German, Heil Hitler." <laughs> so, what the heck have they do? Something to do with the uh, with the Second World War? I mean, they, uh, they were their parents or grandparents or so, but they they don't have. Uh, they were born after that, so they don't have to. 
you cannot mix that it's just it's so weird mm. and uh, yeah so so don't mix up the people where they're coming from with their history that they have the other thing is uh, all the American people the US people that I met at that time in, in South America uh, that was um, Bush was president and uh, they just started the war in, in the Gulf the second Gulf War I don't know and all the people that I met, they say, I don't want to have to do anything about it. <laughs> they, they are totally different people. So, so you cannot say, oh, he's from this, the, uh, this country or from this region or whatever. He will s think about that or is it like this or so. Or he's. So no, I mean, uh, the, the people who are traveling, they're more open-minded. Uh, the, um, the most. I, there's still some idiots on the way everywhere. But the most of them, they, uh, yeah, that's why they're traveling. They don't want to see the, the, the other cultures. They want to see the differences the, uh, and, and the common grounds. I mean, there are always differences, but there are always common grounds as well. Something that you see, oh, yeah, I didn't expect that. But that is what we have as well, or we, we use it as well. As it, yeah. Going back to to languages and I want to pick mm -hmm. up on the points you've just been making later on um, a lot of Chinese tourists who traveling outside of China use um, apps for translation mm -hmm. in places did you use that that sort of technology to help you no at all? not at all I'm not I I'm really not a um, technology freak in that way <laughs> uh, what I use is, is a kind of a picture book where there are some paintings in and <laughs> you can uh, go through and say oh yeah here is that or so you can go to a restaurant and say, oh, I want to have this and this and uh, or not that or so uh, that, that is the, the thing that I use I didn't have a smartphone either um, before I went to uh, South Korea there I had to buy a new phone because my my old flip up phone didn't work with in, with a SIM card there so I had to buy a new one so I, I basically went all the way without having a GPS uh, an, an app for translating or whatever it was it was funny and as I was in Turkey there were some journalists and it's kind of a, a strange situation there they they're not working for a newspaper they're working for a news agency so they try to get whatever they can and then sell it how as much as they can and they can get a lot of money so I got interviewed a lot of times and they can't talk English or any any other uh, language so they used to have this um, translating app sometimes it, it works but once they they gave me something to read and said, it doesn't make any sense at all <laughs> so I, think, I don't know what you want to uh, to to know about it it's just those doesn't it i couldn't figure out what the heck is there there's no no sense at all so yeah that's why i think now i don't i don't uh, use some translating app or so but yeah i mean it is uh it's the the, uh, the time uh, at the moment uh, you have this kind of tools you you have these apps or and so and I was growing up without that or so I mean yeah I was traveling with with, with physical maps and so so that's why I like to have a physical map as well I, even though in in this time is uh, you can easily well where do you want to go where okay you um, yeah, but there must have been periods, l relatively long periods of time, where you didn't meet anyone with whom you could have a conversation. Did you? How did you cope with with that sort of? Oh, uh, that's that's why I talk a lot now <laughs> when I can talk with someone. <laughs> um, that is that is kind of a, a character thing as well, I and mean, uh, or how you cope with that or kind of um, yeah w uh, expectation or so I mean uh, there are a lot of people they say oh don't go to to the desert or so you're getting getting mad or so I mean yeah if you 
if you know that you're getting mad, at least you have something to know <laughs> or to, to, to concern about that or so. Yeah, there, there are some long stretches in desert-like countries or desert-like landscapes or so where you really didn't meet anyone or so. Yeah, what I do is I try to enjoy the scenery or <laughs> to see some flowers or some animals or so. I uh, I really wanted to see this thorn devil in, in the Nullarbor or so, but right, yes. I didn't have any chance to see that. You know, I stopped everywhere or so on the way and, and just went into the bush and, and tried to catch there. But yeah, if you don't know where they are, you can't find them. So... Uh, yeah, that's that's one thing. I I, I sing, I I pray, I think about uh, some friends and relatives and, and whatever and so. So there's a lot to uh, thing to do. I, or you can think about what what you want to uh, to write the new blog or to write an email to your friends and relatives or whatever. You can think about this and that and and so and yeah. So you do use technology <laughs> then while you're traveling. For blogs and emails and yeah, yeah, I uh, yeah because I'm kind of a, a semi-professional photographer, uh, so I take a, a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, photographs. So I edit them and I have my website and put everything on the website. Do some video footage as well. I mean, I'm not a, a videograph, but uh, yeah, just for fun, just to to do something and. Yeah, basically, it's kind of uh, remembering what, where you are and what you have gone through, and and so. But for the photos, of course, I, I have a kind of a, a different aspect. Um, that's that's more than just have kind of a, a remembering what. So, so I, I really try to to do it as professional as as I can, or so, and try to get a little bit a, a different angle or whatever, and so. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's the big part of, of my technology that I have, camera and um, all these things and the laptop and, and so on, but yeah. Because that's changed in the last 10 years, I suppose. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah there was there was a big difference. I was as I was traveling in South America, I was traveling with a normal analog camera and with a bag full of film rolls uh, and then I tried to get some people uh, where they just uh, uh, fly back home and I gave them some some package uh, can you could you take that home and send it to to my home address <laughs> so I don't have to carry them along uh, yeah it was it was a big difference I thought at that time as uh, digital came in ah oh, you don't have to carry that much uh, bags with with the rolls and so so your your luggage get gets uh, smaller and lighter but you have to have charger you have the batteries spare batteries I want to have a, a laptop to edit the photos immediately and so so and then yeah it goes heavier and heavier <laughs> instead of lighter and lighter oh. yeah. Yeah. The days of sending a postcard have <laughs> well gone now, I think. Yeah, but I still do it. <laughs> <laughs> I still do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, but it's, that was really the, the difference. And that, that's why I came up with, a, with this uh, unusual bike, because I have a lot of photography stuff. I didn't keep it uh, in one camera. I had one camera in South America. Now I have two professional cameras, four lenses. Uh, I, I even let, left some lenses back home because I couldn't take everything. And I had so much stuff. I and mean, that, that was the thing. I, I, I just put everything aside and I said, I can't take that on a bicycle. I mean, I can't, ta I can't, well, I can't get up any hill. It's just too heavy. So that's why I came up with electronic motor to help me to an assist. It is still an assist. It's not a motorbike, and to charge the battery with solar panels, and to charge the battery for your laptop and your cameras and so on, presumably with the solar panels. No. Oh, you can't. Oh, right. No, no. That's why I have to go time by time to somewhere where I can charge the the, the battery of the laptop. Uh, and, uh, yeah. 
Right, now you mentioned earlier about other cyclists. I'd like to talk you brief talk to you about other tourists. Um, can you categorise tourists? Or do you categorise tourists in your own mind? Or would, <laughs> are you prepared to share with us the <laughs> categories that you give to other tourists? Yeah, that's always a big thing. Uh, I try not to categorise, <laughs> but for sure it's the human mind that try to put everyone into a different kind of category. Yeah, the thing is, I, I learned it in a hard way that I don't have to categorize people or uh, the tourists. I, I'm more happy than, than people are going around than the, the way that they are touring. I mean, for sure, there are some kinds of uh, transport that are really not uh, environmental friendly, especially kind of cruise ships or something like that, uh, and I, I don't do it, uh, except the, the cruise to the Antarctic, but that was a science ship, that wasn't kind of a cruise ship like with swimming pool and all these gadgets. Yeah, I really don't want to... Uh, want to look down on, on other people what if they uh, do some other uh, means uh, yeah if they use another means of transport or so yeah I don't I try not to do it but you see that that everybody is doing that anyway and you see the reaction is, is different I mean I, I really have different reaction when I come by bike than by uh, as a backpacker, so, so uh, that was, uh, I wanted to go to Southeast Asia and that wasn't possible, so, uh, but I, I still had the, the visa for Vietnam, uh, so I, I read a lot of blogs from other people, some they were touring around uh, Vietnam by bike and some were touring as backpackers. And it was funny as I read uh, these different uh, blogs uh, from various people that there are it, it was really two separate things they had two separate experiences uh, people on a the bike they they tend more to have a positive uh, reaction from the people or so and, and backpackers got more of a negative unfortunately um, yeah people uh, are more open when you come by bike than as you step out of a car or a, of a bus or something when like that. When you say people, do you mean uh, tourists or local no, people? No, local people. Yeah. Local people, yeah. Yeah. They, uh, I don't know, uh, it's, it's probably why, yeah, people can't understand or can't, or it's, 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 it's still crazy when, they, when you say you come by bike from Europe, you drove all the way by bike yeah then then yeah i just flew here it's just a different thing and it is it's really work that you have to do by bike from europe through to central asia and and southeast asia and so people are ranking you in a different way than uh, than uh, as a backpacker or so um and on the other hand that is uh yeah you're you're treated like a king you're treated like a special person. Uh, you're treated like a, a celebrity, and, and so and uh, that is tempting. That is addicting as well, and uh, and it's a trap. Mm. Uh, and that that that's an experience that a lot of people do. Uh, and unfortunately, I, I I know some people they they fall into that trap. Um, yeah, they, they come back home and, and I always thought, why people saying when they come back from a bike trip, oh, I want to do it again. Is it really the biking or, or so? I mean, for sure, biking is, is, is beautiful and, and all the, it's got all these beautiful aspects. But one aspect is really that you're treated like, like a king, like a celebrity. You're, you're someone. And who doesn't want to be a rock star? <laughs> honestly uh, and then you go back home and no one else care <laughs> and it's just 
yeah, you go shopping and no one turn around here and, and ask you where you're from, where, what have you done, and oh, you're here by bike or whatever. So no, it's just, yeah, just another blow. <laughs> and that's it. So you're nothing. You're finally, <laughs> from rock star to average people. And they say, oh, I want to be a rock star again. Ah, go biking again. <laughs> so that's, that's very tempting. And so, so yeah. Now that I find this fascinating because <laughs> there's there's so much. Well, as I mentioned, um, not in this interview, but earlier, um, one of the things that seems to be prom being promoted much more in Northern Europe at the moment is slow travel, mm -hmm. and uh, biking is uh, a wonderful example of slow travel. Yeah. Um, and whilst people may start biking because of the almost ideological belief in slow travel, you're suggesting that once they do it and they're going further afield, other things take over that um, promote that sort of travel for them as individuals. So, you know, the rock star bit. Yeah, yeah. They suddenly yeah, become... Yeah. Improve. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, there's, there are some, some other aspects that other people may have in, uh, experienced or so. And I, I read from other people, they say, ah, I'm kind of in this stage of my traveling experience or so. And I say, huh? I never reached that or I, I don't know. I, I Yeah. Um, but I think it's, it's personality as well. I mean, it's... It, it, yeah, we're human, we're individuals. Everybody has another another character, another personality. And uh, even though if, if two will travel the same road in one day ahead, they will make different experiences. So it's, it's, it's difficult to say that. Mm. <laughs> you, you, when I was 15, I went on a, a bike tour around England with a school friend of mine mm -hmm. the two of us went together all yeah. the way when we got back and people would ask us individually about the trip and there they would trips. say there were, two, yeah, there were two trips yeah absolutely yeah yeah it, it, it was funny i uh i saw made a winter break in uh bishkek or in kyrgyzstan went back home to switzerland and then went further on i took a friend with me uh, a long time friend and uh he went with me from Bishkek to the Chinese border. So he bought a bike over there and he traveled alongside of me. And uh, yeah, I mean, we, we just separated at the Chinese border and I haven't seen him since then. And I really want to see him again and ask him what was his travel from, yeah. And I guess he was, it, it was a different story for him than for me, especially I, as, I, as I say, because I, was traveling slow from Europe to all these towns to uh, Kazakhstan. For me, it was kind of a slowing shifting of the culture things. So, so uh, suddenly you see, ah, the, the uh, it's not suddenly, you see the changing of the culture of the buildings of uh, religion or whatever. And as he came with me, he flew bang. It was just, woof, here you are. And he took photos of things that, uh, for me, it was familiar. As what are you taking photos of this building? Or so it stands everywhere because for me it was normal. It was yeah, I have seen that for since months or so. <laughs> yeah, and and that was really an eye eye opener for me. As so, ah oh, yeah, yeah, that is that is different, and that is yeah. So so he was really. Um, catching uh, different aspects here and there what, what I haven't been because you know, and it's, it's really yeah as you said there were two traveling together but uh, two different stories two different travels and um, yeah and it has to can be something uh, of the personality as well yes and uh, yeah and, and how you look at the things and so I mean I was I was on a, um, I did the Inca Trail with some friends that I met there, and so and it was funny. I, I, as I showed them the f the photos, they say, "Ah, we didn't know that there were so many flowers over there." Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, because I was kind of 
train to see flowers everywhere. It was funny. A friend of mine, he took the same photo of... It wasn't especially a, a really good for a, a place or a, a, not a, a flower that you have to see. No, it was kind of more a bush or something. Just like... And it was funny as we... As we um, shared our photos and it's like, oh, I, I think you have my photos and so now that's mine. So we, and it's about a, a four day walk and there are flowers and bushes and everywhere. And we took the same and uh, we, we, we weren't uh, walking side by side at that time. And it's, it's funny, the same thing that was kind of nothing, we took a photo of. It's strange. A few years ago, um, well, quite a few years ago, I travelled with my boy through South Africa. Oh. And we had one good camera. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the photographs, you can tell who had the camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By what was yeah. photographed. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, because yeah, everybody's got his own subject. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's, yeah. So um, we talked, um, one of the things that I found absolutely fascinating and did really quite humbling in a way you said it's not the tourist that you categorize but it's what they do <laughs> suggesting that there is sometimes a way that people behave because of the situation they're in rather than because of who they are yeah in the sense that if you are backpacking and staying in backpacker hostels you will behave in one way, but if you are cycling and staying with local people, you will behave another way. Am I interpreting what you said correctly? Uh, yeah, yeah, kind of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I stay in, in backpackers as well, uh, and so, but you, yeah, even though I don't want to categorize, but it, it's still, um, a different uh, kind of people that are biking, that are backpacking. I mean, you you see if even though if you're in, in a backpacker, and there are people coming in with a backpack and some people coming in with a bike, they are different people. Uh, so um, yeah, it's it's kind uh, because it's it's a kind of a different um, way of traveling as well. Even though. Um, it's it's very both are very basic mm. uh, kinds of of traveling, um, but it's it's still different, and uh, that's why I um, there are kind of um, like couch surfing and warm showers. If you know couch surfing, yeah, uh, warm showers is the same for cycling for yeah. bicycle tourists, but it's. Uh, the people who are offering the houses for couch surfing are different than people are offering the house for warm showers. Some do both, but when when you when you separate or when they are only on that platform or on that platform, you see this because people on on warm showers they know the what you're doing or so because they're cyclists as well or yeah. have done touring as well or so. Some they are not. But still are very curious about uh, what people have uh, have been going through or so. But but they know that, that on a bad day or so you you come in with dirt all over, sweaty and and stinky and whatever and so. And on car serving some on the profiles is we are very f uh, very clean family and we expect to, you to be clean as well. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> I mean, if it's raining cats and dogs, and you're you're dropping and 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 the dirt all over, and so and so you can't ask for. Can I stay at yours when you come with dirt? So yeah, that's this kind of of different people as well. But it depends on in which culture as well. I mean, it's as I. Stayed in in Central Asia or so, uh, and I say I, I come only for one or two days or so, and they say, "Oh, are you leaving already? Oh, why don't you stay uh, two or three days or so?" Uh, uh, yeah, th I mean, th there's kind of cultural thing as well. I mean, you, you can't stay for 
three, four weeks or months or so. <laughs> <laughs> I will know. <laughs> when I was traveling through the Middle East, um, I ended up in this little village in the Sudan, mm. which had never had a Westerner. <laughs> I met someone on a train who'd taken me home. Yeah. And I soon realized that I couldn't leave the village until I'd had a meal at everybody's house because <laughs> somebody would be looked at they, their social status in the village would change yeah yeah, yeah. I mean that is that is something that you unfortunately have to do also. I mean yeah. I was uh, in, in Kyrgyzstan what they present for foreigners or so is, is the sheep head yes and uh, yeah that is kind of an honor or yeah. so or yeah what, what, do, what do you get get to eat and I'm as a vegetarian, and I, <laughs> I'm, I mean, I, not a face or whatever because of a, a nasty disease. I, I may not eat meat or so. And and I say I, I don't have to get in that situation mm. that they they offer me that sheep head. Mm. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and because I can't say no because mm. that would yeah. be very offended. Yeah. So I, I really try to uh, to avoid that situation. And, it's really, yeah. But yeah, in, in Iran or so, I mean, that, that is especially in Iran when you go to, to a shop or so, you, you pick something out of the shelf and want to go to, to the um, cashier and they say, oh, it's okay. Mm. Don't say, okay, yeah, thanks and, and go. Because that is, that is their, their manner as well. Yes. Uh, it is, uh, uh, at least you have to ask three times mm. and uh, at the third time, he said, okay, it's $2 or whatever. But you have to insist, 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 and after three or four times or so, and he still said, no, it's okay. It's really okay. You can take it. So then it's okay. Yeah, but you have to learn it as well. Yeah, yeah. It's not, and there's no, so, oh, everything's free for you. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I can grab this and that. And so. No. With this staying as well, I mean, uh, the, uh, yeah, I was, I was staying at a, uh, at a family in, in Iran and they, they say, oh, we go uh, to our summer house uh, during the weekend. Uh, do you want to come? Yeah, one, one person more or less, it doesn't matter. And so, so yeah, and it really doesn't matter. And you, you're really invited, and you're you're really a part of the family, or so. Mm -hmm. And and they don't say oh, it's time to leave, or so. I mean, I didn't had that experience here in New Zealand, or but yeah, as I went to Australia, or so. Uh, I had kind of a, of a difficult time because I didn't know when my trike arrived, or so. And I always was communicating. Uh, months uh, before what I will do and, and whatever and, and my situation I explained every step and so and after uh, after the third day they said okay our uh, guests uh, only stay with us three days tomorrow you can leave so, okay yeah thanks uh, <laughs> I mean I don't have anything against if, if someone that's their rules that's okay but you can still say that beforehand yes. three days yeah. not more okay yeah then I'll say, oh, no, okay I can stay three days and, and then uh, but but not then not on the evening tomorrow in the morning you can go and it's, mm, yeah so that is that is kind of a, a, the difference of the cultures and uh, and I see that is uh, that is in all the kind of developed countries or so in in Switzerland in Germany in in the US and and, and uh, yeah when you when you go to these Facebook groups and whatever and and uh, answers and questions and so you you see that kind of thinking that oh it's not it's not a, a place where you can s uh, stay for free and so yeah I know, but I don't want to to take that for granted. Mm. But still, it's it's just a different culture. Sometimes I, I think it's just for for uh, yeah. I'm a good person. I let some uh, someone uh, yeah. sleeping here or so and so. It's not wholehearted or so. I mean, you you're taking that for granted when you ask people, "Can I stay here for one two nights or so?" And they say yes, and then you go home and say. Yeah, but you have to leave. <laughs> so, mm. yeah, for sure, we are different people. We have different cultures. It's a different background. So, 
Culture works the other way too, though. You remind me of when I was in the um, in northern Thailand a few years ago, met a um, um, Swiss French woman, mm -hmm. and she said she always carried two guidebooks with her, one in English, which she used to find accommodation, mm -hmm. and the other in French, which she used to find restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> um. Because she said that the, the, the priorities in yeah. the different guidebooks were completely different. Yeah, I guess that's, what, that's the point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Guidebooks, that is another thing. Guidebooks were used in, in the former times. I don't know if, if they really can uh, exist anymore or so because everybody is yeah. trying to, to get the information out of the internet now. Uh, yeah, I, I went, uh, I had these guidebooks as well in, in South America or so, but, and then there were kind of two different guidebooks as well. There were Lonely Planet, that everybody was using, and there is Footprint, the second one. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were, uh, they were the same weight, the same size, but they got uh, thinner pages and, and smaller writings, and so they got heaps of more information in there and it was funny as I was reading my my, my travel book on, in a bus and people behind me they said uh, can, can we just borrow your book we have only this little lonely planet <laughs> and so I, I knew why uh, it's really yeah it depends where you're going uh, and so but uh, I found the lonely planet in Argentina it was written by an American yeah so I had to translate what an American might think is good into how someone from the UK would interpret what an American which yeah. was, was an interesting uh, exercise in cultural difference oh yeah yeah I mean I, I had a, the, the experience in uh, on the Antarctic ship as a, uh, there was a Canadian and an Australian and they were looking into the Lonely Planet book and one was asking the other do you know what that means I mean, they're native English speakers and they didn't know what the heck was yeah. standing in there. Yeah. And I said, oh, it's not only me that doesn't understand what is staying there. And, and, I, and that is, unfortunately, they, they try to make it as hip as possible. And yeah. I, said, I don't speak that uh, slang from Brooklyn or wherever you yeah. write that. Yeah. I don't care about how hip that book is. Just... We want to have information and not, oh, wow, we're so cool. <laughs> I, I don't want, I want to know if it's okay, not or whatever, but still, um, yeah. And Lonely Planet, I had the Lonely Planet in, in, uh, in Bishkek. I wanted to find something. Uh, I went to three hostels. They were, didn't exist anymore. And the third one or uh, the fourth one was, uh, was a five-star hotel. So, what the heck is doing a five-star hotel in a Lonely Planet book? It's yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, so, yeah. sorry, I'm really not a, f a fan of Lonely Planet. <laughs> well, they've, they've, cha they've certainly changed over the years. Yeah. From you know, I've got the Lonely Planet to Africa, with the first one that was published mm. in 19... 78 yeah and it's about that thick yeah and now it's like this yeah yeah and it, all, it said, <laughs> all it said it was, was you can stay here you get your buses from here they go to these places yeah it costs roughly this amount yeah. no no value judgment at all no no yeah and this is this, uh, 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 something different as well i mean mm. i was Oh, I was told, oh, you have to go there. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And you really have to go. Uh, I was in South America as well. Uh, you have to go to Chile in mm. southern Chile. This island is beautiful. It looks like Switzerland. Yeah, it looks like Switzerland. So for me, it was yes. okay. <laughs> they have hills. They have cows. It looks like home. So, uh, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't really different. Or for me, it was okay. Yeah, that's it. I mean, yeah, what we didn't have is to see around, but yeah, yeah. but yeah, it, it's really, I mean, I, I was told, or I had a really good experience in, in uh, El Mochilero in uh, Ushuaia. Oh, yeah. Because the, the lady who was working there at that time, she was, oh, she was so beautiful. I mean, mm -hmm. her character yeah, and yeah. her... It was yeah. so so nice and and so and the people there as well mm -hmm. it was just like a bunch of 
people that I met there, it was perfect. But you come in two months later or whatever and so, and there are totally different people there. Mm. You, you, you f don't find a place like that anymore. So, I mean, okay. yeah. So, so I don't write, hey, that's that. You have to stay there. It's, oh, it's, yes, of course. It's yeah. a, uh, because I had a great time there. And then the people say, oh, yeah, he was recommending that. So we mm. go there and yeah. say, and yeah, I'm not a party people. Mm. And, and some are party people, so mm. I'm, I'm not yeah, looking sure. for that, and some are looking for that, so mm. I can't say, oh yeah, you have to go there for, for this and that. And Although, so. to be fair, Ushuaia is one of my favorite places in the world. Oh, it I is, yeah. Ushuaia. Yeah, you can, yeah. You can, you can yeah. encounter all four uh, seasons in <laughs> one hour. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> um, uh, there's something else that flashed through my mind there, I can't remember now. <laughs> <laughs> come back to it um so let's just um we've talked about different sorts uh, di different well different sorts of uh, uh longer term travelers um did you have you been to many of the places where sort of people on one two week holidays go beach type areas <laughs> <laughs> I tried to avoid that yeah. Yeah. no I mean I uh, I was uh, I had not always the opportunity to be a long time traveler as well mm. so I know the situation then uh, I mean I, as I came back home from one year I I had the same situation as well I, I only had two weeks and or three weeks or so and then I had to figure out what to do or so well yeah one experience was in Ushuaia, sorry, I have to go to, back there as well. I met a British girl and she booked a flight ticket uh, about 80 days around the world or so. And she was on her very early step and she already said no. It's, yeah, because she figured out that there are a lot of... Pla yeah, you, you, you are, you're flying into Ushuaia. And then you see, oh, there is a glacier where you can go. Oh, there is a, there is a tour to pe penguins there you can go do it. There is a, uh, there's a national park where you can do hikes for a week or whatever. So and there's so many things to do that you say, ah, oh, I'm I'm here only for two days. <laughs> so I have to skip something and have to do the other thing. And so, uh, yeah, that is really some experience and then she had to do this this trip and and all already regret regret that uh yeah but i mean yeah you can have a kind of an insight here and there and so but on the other hand is okay i will go back to every place again <laughs> um yeah yeah where, where people making holidays for two weeks or so or or party uh beaches like Kuta Beach in Bali or so. I was there for half an hour and said, okay, yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> it's not the place that I'm happy, so different purpose, different style of life and whatever. Different I mean, motives for traveling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, I don't, I don't want to categorize that or so, it's just not me. Yeah, uh, isn't, we're not, I'm not it's suggesting <laughs> not, not suggesting value judgments. It's just not appealing yeah. to to some individuals. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the people are people are saying, "What are you doing in the desert? There's nothing to see." Oh, yes, oh, I have some friends back home. They did Nullarbor and, and uh, Australia or whatever, and people in the cars is it well, it's nothing to see. So, yeah, because you rush through mm -hmm. and you don't see anything or so. I mean, for sure you see some trees here, some here or so, but, but you don't see them. And my friend, he could capture that thorny devil on a bike. Oh. <laughs> well, that's why I thought, oh, maybe I can catch yeah. it. But now, yeah, you see a lot more or whatever. And it's, it's not nothing. It's it's not boring or so. And people, it's nothing is boring. And when you mm. step out, a hundred flies or so. so. Yeah, I had the flies all over. <laughs> I mean, I, I camp here and whatever. So, yeah, that's it. And my point of view is this, and you're doing it wrong. It's, it's a different means, different motives.
<laughs> so what do you pl- what do you expect to do when you uh, when, when you get home in what two weeks time or something? Oh, try to find work and uh, get some money to go f- uh, traveling again. <laughs> when we open up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at the time when when it's possible again, whatever it it will look like. No one knows at the time what it will be or so. That is basically what I try to do. Uh, I will see if, if uh, what, what I can find a uh, kind of job or so. I'm not specific into something that uh, that I've learned or whatever so I just see mm. yeah <laughs> keep open mind <laughs> yeah, I can certainly empathize with a lot of the things you've said because of my travel experiences although I haven't gone for many years mm. um, I mean the language one in particular I mean, one of the most joyous conversations I've ever had who was sitting as a passenger in a truck in um, the Sudan, traveling across the desert. The, the driver just pointed in the direction of the town he was going to, <laughs> which was 24 hours away. <laughs> <laughs> and we had no common language. Oh, yeah. And, um, and yet we talked for most of the way uh. <laughs> in our own languages and seem to understand exactly what the other <laughs> was saying. Yeah, that we was... stopped at a caravanserai yeah. um, and uh, it, was, it was just wonderful. Yeah. yeah. A friend of mine, uh, that was uh, that one that, that took the photo of this thorny devil. Yeah. Um, he's uh, from originally from the northern part of Italy, so yeah. he speaks uh, Italian, but uh, Roman as well. So it's, uh, this kind of part, and uh, he figured out uh, he was he was cycling around the world with his wife uh, mm. for seven years as well, and he said sometimes he just talk in his own native language Mm -hmm. uh, because of uh, the intonation and uh, or body language I mean for sure Italians and body language is a different thing Uh, (laughs) um, but kind of the expression of faces or or, uh, yeah it's that is kind of international or so Mm -hmm. he said it's uh, because they don't understand it anyway uh, if you talk if you try to talk in English or in Roman or so it yeah. it, it sounds like blah, 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 anyway yeah. so it doesn't make any difference so just talk what your mother tongue is and uh, sometimes yeah, they can understand you and uh, yeah it's really that experience I, I made it especially in China as well or so I mean they can talk uh, other languages than Chinese mm. and I can talk Chinese <laughs> anyway, I can about three words or so um, I only remember Xixi <laughs> and that's it the easiest way is because I was heading to Beijing I only had to do Beijing mm. and uh, it's the only uh, the easiest mm. way to, to get some direction but otherwise it's just yeah just talk <laughs> what your mother tongue is <laughs> did you find I uh, said China's going through has gone through such big changes in the last twenty years. Um, did you f- find the openness to you on a bike in the same way that you found in the uh, in Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan and so on? Um, was because you were talking you in some places if if you're on a bike you're obviously poor. Um, <laughs> um, but. Uh, the impression I have, not having visited China, is that the attitude to poor people is not quite the same as it is in other parts of the world. It's changing. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, I can't compare how it was or so. I mean, I have been to China with a friend of mine. He's a Chinese as well, but lives in Melbourne. And that time we took kind of a flight trip from yeah one beautiful city to the next or so and with a bike it is really different it's different travel and the thing is uh, I came in in Xinjiang and that is uh, the 
autonomy region of Xinjiang. And the people are different there. I mean, if you made Uyghurs um, or Han Chinese, uh, it, it, you have different reaction, of course. Uyghurs are a little bit more re, uh, reserved, but still more... Uh, it's, it's difficult to explain that. They're kind of curious as well, but a little bit more reserved than the, Chi the Han Chinese. It is different. I mean, as across the border to China, or so everybody wants to take photos and selfies and, and whatever and so. But, but yeah, not speaking about you're, you're rich or you're poor or whatever. Or so, but, yeah. Some, they, they wanted to, to practice their English. <laughs> Police station, yeah, that is the the pro the problem in Xinjiang. Uh, every every city where you enter in, you have a kind of a police station where you have to cross and so on. And so one police officer, he was a kind of stony face, and uh, oh, okay, he looked like he would kill children or so. And I just yeah <coughs> made this <coughs> check on my passport and everything, and, and then he he said something very. Kind of it sounds rude to his soldier, and he was weaseling away, and and came back with a bottle of water and gave it to me. So he was commanding them, give him some water. He's a poor, he's a he's a, a, a guy on the bike, and it's hot here, and and uh, yeah. So I I didn't expect that kindness of yeah. that particular yeah. officer, the stone face, and uh, not even. Thank you, go or sorry, it was <laughs> so not even as I had the the bottles. He was kind of a slight of nice expression on his face. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's a different culture as well. There is, uh, yeah, China is is another planet. What is logic to them is not logic to us, and mm -hmm. vice versa. Uh, so I I had a hard time. <laughs> it's always do I. Uh, categorize them because of my background or so or do I try to to understand I I really try to understand that and so I mean something you can understand because of their history of the long history of the recent history and so why they reacting this way and why not and, mm -hmm. and so but it's still I don't know if if I would live there for five years if I will really can understand how the people are like they are <laughs> well, yes, but can you do that about people any, anywhere? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, no. <laughs> I mean, that's the whole one of one of the things that appeals to certain types of tourists is to meet people who view the world in a very different way yeah. to the way they viewed the world. Yeah, that is the beautiful thing of traveling, that you can exchange these uh, views uh, of, of how you view the world and, uh, and this. Uh, and, so. and as you get more experience, you learn to know, well, you, you, you learn that you, um, in the past, made massive assumptions. <laughs> What I mean by that, there are certain things that you wouldn't, you would never think about doing now. That I'm sure you may have done when you started traveling. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because you looked at the world from your own cultural bubble. Yeah. And now you realize that you come from your cultural bubble, and the other places yeah. are different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for sure, you you always have your kind of history backpack that you carry with you. Oh, so of course, you, yes. You can't. Even though if you try to cut your roots or so, mm -hmm. you still mm -hmm. have that root or so, you still, yeah. I, but the difference is being aware of it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, I mean, there are, there are some people that say, oh, I'm a hippie, I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't believe that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I no. mean, uh, yeah, you can't, uh, even though if you, I mean, some re some people change their life, but you can't deny that you ki come from kind of a, of a of a background or whatever. And so, I mean, yeah, but yeah, it's different. I can't do it. I don't know. 
It's um, only within uh, had the aspect of your environment. <laughs> oh yeah, well we can. Yes, yeah, sure, we didn't. Um, all right, we'll go. We'll, we'll do Sorry that. That. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, yes, the environmental side of. I mean, d well, we, we've 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 hinted at it in terms of um, motivation to travel mm -hmm. slowly and motivation mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. um, use renewable power sources yeah, yeah. Um, although how renewable um, the food that you eat to power your bike yeah. <laughs> is, is, a, is another uh, matter yeah yeah but it's yeah, not like true. flying everywhere yeah yeah um do you have any pangs of guilt about flying or is it just something that has to be done and you just don't do it because it ruins the experience i mean oh yeah, I mean, yeah, now I have to fly back yeah, home yeah. and so on. And honestly, there, yeah, they are not. Uh, yeah, the infrastructure changed. Mm. You can't go everywhere by boat anymore. No. So, or it's it's, uh, yeah, too complicated and too expensive as well. And so, and that is, yeah, that's the other thing. I mean, you can say, oh yeah, uh, because of the environment. Uh, <laughs> I pay a luxury yacht. <laughs> it's just yeah, yeah. I feel like guilty for sure. Um, yeah, but on the other hand, I I can't change it. I mean, if I could change it, then yeah, probably would. On the other hand, I say uh, I was accused from from people that ah, uh, you are not hundred uh, percent renewable <laughs> or okay, environmental yes. friendly mm. or something. I never said that, that I am hundred mm. percent. Uh, I try to reduce my footprint mm. and it's, uh, it's just compare what I did these 40,000 kilometers in a car or in an SUV mm. compared in what I did on a bike or in my bike style so it's just that is different and that is uh, if you compare that then it's still less for sure um, but I cannot reduce it to to zero or so uh, that's that's not possible that is the impact that traveling has uh, it, it has an environmental impact uh, on the other hand it can teach you how the world looks like and how, unfortunately, how messy the planet looks like and can teach how to react to that or how um, to deal with that. I'm reading that there is there seems to be a push, particularly in Northern Europe, so Germany, I never know whether to include <laughs> Switzerland in Northern <laughs> Europe, uh, psychologically maybe. <laughs> Northern of the Alps. <laughs> um, and particularly in Scandinavia for a move to slower travel, less, uh, um, less environmentally damaging. So uh, the, the EU is trying to eliminate all flights less than... 500 kilometers I think and yeah. get people to use the train instead yeah. um, are you aware of those sorts of changes well were you aware oh it's five years since you've been there yeah that been. is that is difficult because I'm uh, five yeah. years uh, since I left and five years yeah. is a long period that it can change a lot of things uh, as a Swiss it's it's difficult as well because we have one of the best uh, railway system and, and public transport mm -hmm. system in the world uh, sorry it's mm -hmm. a little bit big headed but it's, it it's is true. <laughs> yeah. uh, you really can yeah. basically go everywhere with public transport probably not every hour or so but, but you, you still mm -hmm. can and uh, so that is and, and we're not we're not that big so I mean we have yeah. kind of flights from Zurich to Geneva or mm -hmm. so that you can take uh, but yeah if you have to go to be uh, one hour before the flight and whatever yeah, and so, so you can easily go that with with a train and so uh, yeah so th that is that is difficult to say um, for sure I will I will embrace that um, 
even though I, I did that in the past as well, just mm. fly to Stockholm for a weekend and back and so, so yeah, yeah. I'm guilty. <laughs> <laughs> we, all, we all did that. Well, sure. yeah, I as as I traveled up to uh, to to Sweden uh, mm. to to do my dog sledding tra- training mm. in, uh, in Kiruna, I took the train. I, I didn't fly up there, and so mm. even though it's, it took me about two days or so, but yeah, I mean, if if you can do it and you have the time, why not? Yeah, it's more. Ple- I think I find it far more pleasant to travel by train than flying. Oh well, yeah, 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 and of course Switzerland's. So, so many other places yeah. are accessible. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, north, south. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's that's the bonus when you're in the middle of the yes, uh, in the middle of Europe, mm. and still yeah, we are not in the middle of EU. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's fu- it was funny as I wanted to yeah. send the postcards back to Switzerland and mm. yeah, from Germany. They say, "Oh, it's outside of Europe." So no, it's in the middle of Europe. It's not. It's outside of EU, but it's in the middle of Europe. <laughs> <laughs> you're not. You're not telling the Germans that they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Get back to your geography class. <laughs> you're, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, Yes, but again, it, it, it comes down to perceptions. Um, a number of years ago, I had a, 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 stu- a German student who wrote a thesis on guidebooks to Switzerland. Mm-hmm. And she compared Spanish, French, German, British and American guidebooks oh. to Switzerland. Oh, I have to do that as well, I guess. And... and um, uh, <laughs> And it was fascinating because the guidebooks, and this goes back to what we were saying earlier, yeah. the guidebooks, because um, what she wanted, she set out with the, the hypothesis, well, she wanted to find out whether they had the standard cliches about Switzerland, you know, mm-hmm. chocolate and... Watches. Uh, watches. Um, yeah, cuckoo clocks, which cuckoo. she says actually come from Bavaria. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> and, right. And William <laughs> Tell. <laughs> yeah. But what she... That was written for, uh, of, uh, by Schiller, yes. as a German guy as well. So <laughs> basically, we rely on a, on a, a, a story yeah. that was outside. <laughs> um, yeah. we, um, but what she found was that the guidebooks reflected much more on the people they were being written for than on Switzerland. <laughs> so so the French guidebooks went on and on about how the Swiss are very punctual. The German <laughs> guidebooks didn't mention it. Well, for sure not. <laughs> There's no point. The, the Spanish guidebooks went, every place went on about how you couldn't... Um, yeah, you couldn't get a meal after seven o'clock at night. Oh yeah, <laughs> but but don't try to get a meal before midnight in Spain. <laughs> I was yes. so, so I was in, at, at seven or eight o'clock in a, in a restaurant. I want to so everything. What he got is kind of this. Uh, what is yeah. <laughs> tapas? Yeah, tapas, yeah. tapas. <laughs> what the heck is that? <laughs> so, yeah, it's really it's so funny and yeah, it's, um, that is. That is the difference. It's, it's, yeah, but it's it's funny that they they say ah oh, from our point of view. So uh, don't expect and don't expect to to shop on Sunday. Yeah, Sundays yeah. everything is closed. Yeah. And the the only gu- <laughs> the only guidebooks that mention terrorism in Switzerland. Yeah. Oh wow, that's new. Wait, 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 no. America. Um, yeah. <laughs> they said while while it is highly unlikely that there will be any terrorism. Incidents while you are in Switzerland. <laughs> Please <laughs> but, be careful. But so, yeah, so so funny that they they really and yeah. But it's, that is the the thing. As I was traveling in South America, everybody said, "Oh, you know, how can you dare to to be there or whatever?" And so yeah. it's so insecure. I read that someone get robbed in the middle of Zurich at a, at a big Bahnhofstrasse, at the mm. main yeah. street. At the ATM, which you get got some money out, and someone get yeah. give me that money in the middle of the day. So it's very scary. <laughs> so it's very dangerous in Zurich. Mm-hmm. So no, it's just one case. Yes, and, I know. I mean, I I heard 
things that uh, I've been in in Rio de Janeiro at the places so or people get getting hit uh, with a knife in the head and so mm-hmm. and I was there at that particular mm-hmm place and it's like, oh mm-hmm. I was there. So yeah, if you're if you're somewhere on the wrong time on the wrong uh if you're wrong in the place wrong place at the, the wrong, wrong time, time. Yeah. it hits you. Yeah. But you can't tell when that is. I mean it, yeah And you can't live your life on that basis. No. Uh, yeah that is the thing. Mm-hmm. You you're nowhere safe mm. but you're nowhere in danger. But which actually, which actually <laughs> it's, it's a good point, and I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, traffic. Ha- I would imagine cycling in parts of China <laughs> is a bit scary. Ah, oh, not at all. Ah, oh, yeah, it is. It is. Um, everybody has got all different rules. Chinese have the rules. You can. It, it's le- uh, right-hand traffic. Where you you can go into any road from the right side from any so you you're basically are driving on a highway and there is a small path f- coming from a field and if it's just whoosh, in they don't they don't look at the right side or whatever they had the right mm-hmm. of way from the right side even a small road or whatever so it's really uh, it's that is scary and uh, you really try to to avoid it or so and and the people they they react like that uh, it's, it's really if if they see something two k's ahead on their lane they <laughs> they honk go away you're in my way or whatever and 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 they they really kind of panic sometimes and and on the other hand it's so chaotic Mm. Is, so I created my term. The, the Chinese are kind of uh, uh, panic coating people. <laughs> it's, it's really they're so chaotic for my mm. opinion, and and they panic every everywhere. Uh, Hong Kong, Kong, and and where um, the worst place was Iran. Oh, uh, I imagine I've heard Tehran uh, is the yeah. worst place to. I mean, I I, yeah. I I wasn't in Tehran with my bike. Mm. Um, but it's really if if you have three uh, two lanes, there are three cars. Uh, mm-hmm. They use yeah. every space what is mm-hmm. available, uh, or so. But on the other hand, I wanted to go left. I just I don't have any indicator, so I just wave. I want to go left, and everybody makes place. Mm-hmm. And everybody, mm-hmm. I could easily go uh, uh, cross all the lanes that are available, and everyone's yeah, backing up and and, and give you space. On, uh, uh, but they drive ridiculous. There's really I don't know if they really make a driving license or <laughs> especially the men. I, I only have seen women taking driving li- li- uh, right, licenses, yeah. and no men. Uh, but on the other hand, I have to say I'm more safe with this bike than yeah. with a, bi- a mm. packed bike. Mm. Uh, we had that discussion as well, and and some uh, he measured. He was. 80 centimeters wide with his bags and so and I'm only one meter so it is 10 centimeters on each side it's not very mm. much so I will say um, th- well thank you very much for um, talking to me today um, You're welcome and um, we will